we're here with the cast and crew or director of Life After Beth, premiering here at Sundance <laughs> Film Festival. <laughs> I'm the writer, director, producer, cinematographer, <laughs> gaffer, group, makeup Beard. artist, Beard. makeup artist. Beard. Acting coach, <laughs> personal coach, life coach. So we've got Molly Shannon, yes. Jeff Baina, yep. Aubrey Plaza, and Matthew Gray Goobler. Yes. Welcome, you guys. Thanks for having me. Sure. Congratulations on the amazing reviews this morning. Really oh, nice. Thank yeah. Thank you. Um, sounds like the premiere was a big hit. How are you guys feeling today? Spectacular. Yeah. Really excited. Fantastic. We always feel spectacular. Yeah, it feels really, really yeah. great. Yeah. yeah. It's fun, and it's a big relief that it's like over the first initial one. It's so nerve wracking, but now it's like, oh, I'm to relax. Now it's out there in the world. Yeah. yeah. Just watching drink some hot toddies. Yeah. Um, by the way, the Jamaican bobsled team was out in the lobby there. Cool they're your. For real? Really? Are you they're for real. Me? They're going to the. Um, they're not there now. They're gone. I think they're crowd. They're like crowdfunding their trip to Sochi because they don't have any money, so they're here raising money. It's kind of it is cool. crazy, right? It's crazy. Sundance is weird. That's what I think. Um, so this is a hilarious, wild ride of a movie. What attracted you guys to the cast? What attracted you to the story? The incredible script, the, writing. the incredible cast, the writing, and I had a very nice meeting with Jeff. And the blood. The blood as well. I was thinking. I think the lack the of a. You, I couldn't after reading it. It was kind of hard to define it, and that was very exciting. Okay. How about you, Mom? Yeah, the writing, it was just amazing. And um, it, it just really, just, um, it was like a page turner, and I loved how real it was and funny. I loved the characters and the story. I really couldn't put it down. And then getting to work with all these amazing actors, like Aubrey and Matthew and John C. Riley and Cheryl and Paul, Jeff. Jeff disassembled the best cast, and then I had a phone conversation with Jeff, and we talked about how you came up with the idea, and I just, I, I love how he works um, uh, artistically and really comes from within and then lets it develop from there. I just thought it was really inspiring, and I, I was excited to get the chance to work with Tell Jeff. Tell us about that. The, Did she just... Do you remember that? Our conversation? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember I, was, I remember I was driving on Santa Monica in Beverly Hills, and I talked to Molly for a little while, and I am always such a big fan of hers. I mean, mm -hmm. from literally one of my favorite sketches in Saturday Night Live history is the Jeannie Darcy thing. I mean, I, ta I, do, I tell it all the time. That's one, and it's just a small little... It's just for some reason... Can you I, do your impression of it right now? No, no, you. I went Jeff uh, you. I went... <laughs> don't get me started. Don't even get me started. I don't want to do this right now. <laughs> Yeah, and then I'm here with the dog, obviously, and just, mm -hmm. Molly's amazing. And honestly, when I met with John about the the, the character, for his character, he suggested Molly, and it hadn't occurred to me because, truthfully, when I wrote this, it was all supposed to be within a upper middle class Jewish suburban milieu, and mm -hmm. um, the only Jewish person, for the most part, in the main cast is Paul Reiser. Everyone else is kind of playing semi-Jewish or maybe not even at all mm -hmm. and um, so yeah so when he said Molly Shannon at first it just like something like hit me like that is completely the right choice like she could totally play kooky and and warm and, and vibrant and uh, you know she's amazing so when we talked it was like a really fun I felt like I'd known her for a long time yeah. and she's you know she's literally the warmest woman or human Aww. being or animal anything <laughs> creature in the world in the Aww. universe in the everything even at multi is there anything Aww. warmer than her there's one thing warmer than her um, probably like the Big Bang was pretty warm. Dane DeHaan's hair, right? Dana, yeah. Oh, yeah, Dane DeHaan's hair. That was a great line. Um, so tell me where the story came from. Were you just on, were you, were you watching all these zombie things happen, or what? It's been yeah, bubbling this, up for a while. Uh, I'll start with this. this poem really influenced this movie. Um, it's called Eternity by William Blake. Mm -hmm. And it's, he who binds to himself a joy does the winged life destroy. But he who kisses a joy as it flies lives in eternity sunrise. So the theme is sort of if you hang on to something mm -hmm. too tightly and don't let it kind of have its own life, that you're going to end up being destroyed by it. But if you just sort of appreciate something as it's passing, then that's eternity. And that was the original wow. title. That's yeah, originally it was called Wing Life. Life. Wing Life was, was the, the original, original title. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then um, it was definitely heavily influenced by the Orpheus myth. Or, you know, Orpheus is a musician, and his name is Zach Orfman, and oh. his wife dies and is bitten by a snake and goes to hell, and he has to go to hell and rescue her, and he brings her back to life, and then it's when she looks back, breaking the rule that she shouldn't look back, that she ends up fading away forever. Sort of like the way she 
He hasn't yeah. said this all. You haven't heard this. Oh, I said, actually, I didn't tell this to anyone, but I told it to the Fangori guy, and so I feel like now I can start talking about okay. it. I wanted to give him the scoop because I used to Beautiful. subscribe to the Fangori. Okay. So, wow. Yeah. So there was there was definitely that element, and yeah, there's definitely layers to it that are meaningful to me. Right, so how long have you how long have you been working on it? When did you write it? I wrote it ten and a half years ago. Okay. And almost had it going at one point, and then it fell through, and then I put it away. And then Aubrey's agent um, suggested that she revive that, and you know, cause she could play that part, and mm -hmm. she suggested that to me. It never occurred to me, but once she said that, I, I realized there's really no one else in the world that could play that part. So, it, and it sort of snowballed from there. That's when we got John, Dane, and Molly, and Paul, and Cheryl. And so Aubrey was kind of the yeah. center. Catalyst. Yeah, the catalyst. She's the catalyst. Right on. What do you like about it, Aubrey? Um, I like. I mean what everyone has said. I like the writing. I love the dialogue. There's so many lines in it when I first read it that I still like can't get out of my head. Um, like, you don't really read scripts like that, mm -hmm. right, where stuff really sticks with you. So I thought it was a beautiful script. And, and, I, and I thought a lot of the relationships were so real and um, familiar and I, th I just think he captured like the suburban relationships really right on mm -hmm. and and I thought it was really funny and mm -hmm. like Googler said it was unlike anything I'd ever read it was I couldn't really put my finger on like what it was <laughs> I mean that stove at the end is just like <laughs> yeah it's bizarre and weird and yeah. unique Cool. I like the whole suburban thing where they're just in this like n nameless kind of place where adult children live with their parents, <laughs> and the, and it's highly secure with by you know security guards and the subdivisions and yeah. Um, I protected keeping LA anonymous. I remember at one point someone said, "Should you say take the 405?" To, and you were you fought hard about. It. I know this has to be a t it's kind of a timeless. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's someplace with a beach, but that's yeah. kind of all you know about it. Yeah, and like even on the beach, you know, we were we saw that at Point Magoo, and there's mountains everywhere, so I just made sure we didn't have any light in the mountains. So it looks relatively flat. So it was, huh. I mean, obviously, when she goes hiking, you see mountains, but up until that point, it doesn't. Uh, hopefully, we made a real big effort to not see palm trees. Uh huh. Um, but then, pretty much one of the last shots is all palm trees, but you know, for the most part. Yeah. So, what, um, what's Jeff like as a director, you guys? And how was this, what was the set like? He's the atmosphere? fantastic. He's the calmest, just what really knows what he wants, happy. Easy going, collaborative. He's the best. He set the tone for the whole movie, and it just made everyone feel really happy and safe. Mm -hmm. I think Paul Reiser put it best. He said, when you work with Jeff, you feel like he either knows absolutely everything and is very calm, like a cucumber. <laughs> he said that verbatim. He's like, cool, a cat. Actually. He's like, cool as a cucumber, or he's a fucking lunatic. And it turned out that he was very knowledgeable and one of the best, one of the best records ever. Okay. Yes, you always feel like you're in good hands because he knows exactly what he wants and he, you feel like he truly has a vision and you it's kind of free because you don't have to worry so much, which I think happens a lot when you work with someone that you don't fully trust. Mm -hmm. um, so it's great for actors because you feel like you're totally safe and you can... And then you can just have fun. Yeah, you can have fun. He also, explore. can I talk about Jeff's laugh? Sure. He's a very, he's a very specific laugh. Can you do it? It's like the <laughs> 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 Google can't do impersonations or, or, or accents. Yeah, that's so, all I can do. Just to give you an idea of how close that is an approximation. Just to give you an approximation of how close that is to my laugh. Google can do a South African accent. Okay, Jeff. Oh, you do the South African So that just gives you an idea. If you know that South African accent, it's spot on. <laughs> um, okay, now you lost. Now you lost me. Oh, was there room for a rehearsal, or um, or was there room was there room for improv, or did you guys have a lot of rehearsals? Was it really scripted? I mean, stuck to the script? What had happened? There was room for improv. Yeah, you could. Um, Jeff was really open to that, and and um, yeah, John C. Riley added the line. The herpetologist line. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, um, Dane actually. He, I, I don't. I don't I don't, I don't know if it's like there's spoilers or I don't know if how that works. Like if I say things that happens at the end of the movie. Well, it's not like I don't. Yeah, maybe. I, want to I don't know what you're about to say, so well, I can't really. It just is, you know, everyone had license to do whatever they wanted uh -huh. as long as it serviced, you know, the movie. And I think 
you know, the scripts at least aspired to be colloquial and, and as, as real sounding as it could. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and when you write it down, you have an ear and you're like, I hope that sounds right. And then sometimes it sounds a little awkward, so you have to make adjustments. And yeah. Sometimes some, we need to do a couple of rehearsals. We didn't, we didn't spend time rehearsing before we started shooting. We would rehearse, you know, like the day of and get into it. So as we were rehearsing it, sometimes, you know, some funny lines would come up or some ideas would come up or funny blocking would come up. That was all welcome, so we totally... That's great. You weren't precious about your script and the words on the page. You wanted yeah, to make I, it right. Yeah. yeah like, when, I, when, I, I, when I first wrote I Heart Huckabees, mm -hmm. the original draft was 325 pages. <laughs> so David and I spent, I don't know, like eight months or a year just just sort of condensing and editing that script down to like 112 pages. Huh. So I learned that through that process that you can't be precious and you, know, you just kind of let things go. And if it's not working or servicing the plot or moving it forward or if... Even if it's just historical and it doesn't, it's an island of historical for no reason, you just gotta cut it off. It's not How did you come to work with David O. Russell? I mean, it's a shame that nothing happened to that guy, but that guy kind of went nowhere, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, well, how did you guys I, work together? I started off as an assistant editor on this online documentary you were just working on. Okay. That's how I found him, because I knew how to edit. And so we started working on that, and then we worked together for a little while, and I wrote three or four scripts with him. And, you know, he showed me the ropes. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so. I, I want to get to oh, one, one thing I wanted to ask you or just say Molly this is kind of off track for a minute but I'm obsessed with getting on it's so oh great me too oh my god I'm about to see that mm. I love it mm. is there any word on it I know I don't know if you be in it anymore but oh yeah about a, about a renewal yeah is a there renewal? a second season um, I really honestly don't know yeah but, uh, yeah it's such a beautiful show it's so good oh, that's I watched them all one. I just watched them all one afternoon oh, it was so great so I just wanted to say that um and so, Matthew and Aubrey, how can you talk a little bit about how TV is different from film acting for you? It's all the same for me. I, I try to do everything I do, like, even just pouring a cup of coffee to the best of my ability. Uh -huh. So, everything's kind of the same. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you've developed a character over a long period of time oh, versus, yeah, that, like... It's weird to, to play a character for, like, nine years, as I've done on TV and on criminal lines, is, in a weird way, kind of like... Um, it very e it makes it a lot easier. So when you're in a movie, um, there's a little bit more of like, you know, you only have six days to to bring everything. Mm -hmm. it's, I don't know, but it's I'm rambling. I'm drunk. So I'm just <laughs> <laughs> right on. Um, I feel the same way. the the big The biggest difference is um, how much time you get to spend with the character that you're mm -hmm. working on. And uh, we're in our sixth season, so. We, so I, I know April inside and out, yeah. and I find that I don't have to, it's easier now, I don't have to think about it, I, I, can, I kind of just like know what she, how she would react to anything or something, mm -hmm. um, but a movie is totally different because it's like got a, a beginning and an end and it's like this journey that you go on that ends and you never go back, mm -hmm. and I like both of them for different reasons, but they're cool. really different. Cool. So, how many of you have been to Sundance before? I've been there. Everybody. Okay. What's so is that? What's that been like? Why do you think film festivals are important? It's nice to be around people who love films. It's nice to have a venue for for films that don't have a home mm -hmm. to find a home. It's mm -hmm. nice to sort of celebrate, you know, independent filmmaking mm -hmm. because you know it's, it was pretty scarce for a while, and now I think it's on an upswing. So that's great. And you get to support your peers who might also have movies here, or fellow actors. This is really exciting. It's fun. Mm -hmm. It's the really fun part of showbiz, too. You finish something and you can celebrate, sharing it with everyone, right? I, I find it like this, our first screening, because I hadn't seen the movie, was just like the pinnacle of the whole trip. I was like, this is, I was just really enjoying it. Can I ask one more? Um, so what's, can you each tell me what's up next for you? I just finished a movie called Suburban Gothic. So okay. It's like a drive-in movie kind of movie. I'm really excited about it. Drive-in in what way? Like a horror? Like or? Not really. It's, it's like, just driving the whole time. It's like a driving. <laughs> just dri no, it's like oh, a, driving. No, I'm just kidding. It's no, it's driving. driving. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's worse. That was worse than that's I guess. It. Um, it's like an R-rated Disney Halloween movie. Wow. And, yeah. And uh, I'm on the TV show. Yeah, yes, I know. Um, I'm still on Parks and Rec. Mm -hmm. We're finishing up our sixth season. And another movie I did right before our movie, 
um, just got into Tribeca. Oh, great. About Alex. Um, I haven't seen it yet, but I loved working on it, so I'm excited about that. Great. Um, there's a book I optioned on a biography by this girl, Crystal Cole, called Lysergic, so I'm trying to adopt that. Lysergic? Yeah, Lysergic, okay. so I'm adopting that as a direct. Great. Yeah. And um, I'm developing a TV, sh TV comedy for Fox with Bruce McCullough from Kids in the Hall. He's oh, my yes. help and worked on Superstar together. Uh-huh. Yes. 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 Whatever. <laughs> but hold on. Thank you. But Bruce is great. And we're good friends for many years. And then I'm on this show, Raising Hope. I do a recurring part on that. Mm -hmm. And then I'm also in this movie called Trust Me, the Clark Gregg, who I went to NYU with also. That just got sold. That was at Tribeca last year, right? Oh, that was Tribeca last yeah. year. Yeah. And then that just got sold to Star, so... Um, no, well, yeah, it was Tribeca, not Sundance. And then I'm in another the movie called The Affair with Maria Bella. But You're I think so there's busy. just. Somebody's busy. Yeah, wow. so that's so exciting. <laughs> we all got like one thing. You got like 15 yeah. <laughs> oh, Save some for the rest of us. Oh, <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks, you guys. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks so much. Okay.